I made some apple jack. Um, I fermented some apple juice because it was not apple cider season, when, which traditional apple jack is made from. Um, and it was quite delicious. Um, okay. But it's now apple cider season. It's fall here in the northeast of the U.S. And um, I picked up myself a, a gallon of um, apple cider, and we're going to make some, um, some genuine hard cider um, out of it. Um, uh, you'll notice, um, if you're not familiar with cider, that it's sort of an opaque brown color. There's apple sediment in it, and if you've ever sliced an apple and left it out uh, to the air, you'll notice that the apple turns uh, brown and uh, the oxygen does the same thing um, to the raw apple juice, uh, the raw unfiltered apple juice. Um, but it makes it extra delicious and it makes it taste um, different from just uh, plain, uh, ordinary bottled apple juice. So, um, the only problem um, that uh, we have is that nowadays um, they tend to put uh, preservatives in, in the apple cider. And this uh, contains um, potassium sorbate, okay, to maintain freshness, they say. So, that will inhibit the growth of yeast um, that might get in there when you open it um, and, uh, and drink from it. Um, so, um, it could be a problem, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put twice the amount of yeast in here that I normally would uh, for a gallon and uh, hope that that, um, that extra boost overpowers uh, the, uh, the preservative and um, that we'll get um, good apple cider, uh, hard, hard apple cider. Uh, so, um, first thing I'm going to do is Put the yeast in, okay. um, just using uh, ordinary um, Fleischmann's active dry yeast. And normally I put one teaspoon in uh, for a gallon, but I'm going to put two in. Okay. Um, so um, that just gives the yeast a head start. There's twice as many. Uh, starter yeast in there to get the colony going, and, um, and we'll be fine. So, uh, now we add in the cider. It's good to get some oxygen in at this point, so not a problem. And in fact, I'm going to um, give this a good shake, get those yeast um, wet and distributed throughout, and get some air in there. And I want to get an initial gravity reading so that we know um, where we're starting with this.
go. Okay, now I'm using uh, a slightly different kind of airlock than, um, than you've seen me use in, in the past. Um, so normally I uh, use these uh, these little uh, loop de loop um, airlocks. Um, but the advantage of this sort of old-fashioned um, wine airlock is that if by putting double yeast in here, it's overactive and, uh, and starts to want to come out the top. Um, I can attach a hose to that into a bigger um, airlock jar and uh, it's called a blow-off tube and it lets, um, it lets it overflow safely without spilling out the top of the, um, of the airlock. Um, but in, in the meantime, what you normally do is you take this, you put a little water in it, And then you float this little cap over top, and that lets the air and the carbon dioxide bubble out. Um, and then this cap has a couple little pin holes in it, and that just keeps bugs out and lets the CO2 escape. So that's it. Um, we have um, our hard cider started. Um, this, I'm guessing, will take uh, a week or two to ferment. Um, and then uh, we'll rack it and let it, uh, let it condition for another couple of weeks and uh, bottle it up and it'll be delicious. It's been about six hours since we uh, pitched the yeast and the cider, and um, they are fermenting. It's slow. Um, it's off to a slow start, but there is there are bubbles forming, and we are getting fermentation. It's been 24 hours since um, I pitched the yeast and the cider, and uh, it is fermenting. It's uh, going slow, but I think we've uh, overcome... The preservative and um, while this might take a little while I think we will get some good uh, hard cider out of it.